Welcome to the Genealogy Radio Show, the radio show that's keeping you in the loop. My name is Lorna Maloney, and I deliver the Genealogy Radio Show at Radio Corkabashkin, the community radio station that is keeping you in the loop and has plenty of shows on offer. The Genealogy Radio Show covers a great deal of ground and has done so for 2021 during our COVID-19 pandemic. And this week's show is all about bringing a little cheer to you today about the Christmas traditions that were in Ireland and are in Ireland today, and some of the origins of those as well. So there are some famous one, and I do hope that you are all looking forward to Christmas and that uh, you know, you're going to have a festive one and may you all stay safe and sound. Christmas in Ireland means different things, but there's no escaping some of the traditions. Christmas cakes and puddings. And people actually say, oh, Christmas starts too early this year. And what's going on there? It's it, the Christmas lights are up. But in the past, all people usually had their Christmas cakes and Christmas puddings made by October. So Christmas doesn't really start earlier now than what it did then, especially for food preparation, because one of the traditions is the laden table. And the laden table is to have everything on the table for festivity, but the meaning behind it is to have sustenance and hospitality for Mary, Joseph and Jesus. So there is a religious um, significance to the laden table as well. And it's something that we're all grateful for, especially this year when really that's what we have, where we, we have our laden table as a sign of festivity. So the type of foods that we would have would be turkey and so on and goose and, and various different aspects as well. So the eighth of another thing as well, when Christmas does start, the 8th of December was usually given as the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, a holy day, and it was the traditional day that the families came up from the country to do their Christmas shopping in one of the larger towns of Dublin, Cork, Galway, and Limerick even. And apart from the facility now to shop, you know, it's something special about going to shop on December the 8th, still, for many of the country people. So, Today, we have got some wonderful traditions of the 8th of, of uh, December starting it. You put up your Christmas tree, many people do, and so on. And of course, you have the Christmas tree. This normally did not go up until almost Christmas, and it varies in county to county. So Irish traditions would have been, I would be putting up my Christmas tree this week. It would be an ordinary spruce or, you know, at the moment. So we have a very decorated tree and it didn't go up. You know, it, it, we were careful about trees as well. And Christmas trees, I can't ever remember one in my grandmother's house. So they're not a tradition everywhere as such, but they are very important to note as well. So really, they're, they're a significant part of Christmas. The Christmas tree is a real symbol and it's never been as important as what it is today. You know, we really have some very significant aspects of how we, we look at Christmas trees and what they mean. Decorating the Christmas tree is one of the highlights for young and old during the season and it's a central symbol of Christmas. So the tradition of decorating one's home with evergreens is a very old one. Evergreens in the form of branches of holly and ivy were brought into the home in the past in Ireland as a symbol of hope, hope and strength in the midst of the cold and dark winter season. According to pagan beliefs, holly and ivy also kept evil spirits away and had protective powers. Customs such as potting trees and bringing them indoors during the winter was a common pagan practice across the world. Today's Christmas tree belongs in German traditions. Medieval plays staged during the season and especially on Christmas Eve often depicted the biblical themes in which a paradise tree symbolized the Garden of Eden. Decorated with apples, nuts and candles, these paradise trees became a common feature 
in people's homes in the 17th and 18th century. In the 19th century, the custom became widely popular and spread across Western Europe. Queen Victoria's German husband, Prince Albert, introduced it into England in the 1840s. Although we do not know who bought the first Christmas trees in Ireland, we can be certain that it became fashionable in the 19th century. German and Dutch immigrants established the festive tree in the United States. So Christmas trees are decorated in a number of fashions, but decorations include tinsel, glass ornaments, fruit like apples, fairy lanterns, life like robin ornaments, straw angels and candy. And the two main traditional colours are meant to be green and red. Green is a symbol of Christian belief in eternal life. Red is a symbol of Christ's blood. The Christmas tree top is often crowned with a star, representing the star that led the three magi, Baldassar, Casper and Melchior, to Bethlehem. In many Irish homes, the Christmas tree is put up, as we said, on the 8th of December, the day of the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, and it comes up on the, it comes down on the 6th of January. So it is interesting to see the traditions at this stage and see where they would have come from and see what we can learn from them. And a wonderful thing to do to put up your Christmas tree, to, to, to know what it symbolizes, hope and light and joy in the space of darkness. Now, of course, we have the wonderful other tradition, apart from the Christmas tree, of the candle in the window. And this is a very famous Irish Christmas tradition. The candle in the window, what does it mean? And why do we do it? So some people like to have loads of lights around the house, and some people have large light up decorations. And so what does it mean, though, to have the candle in the window? Where does it come from in Irish tradition? Some scholars trace their light back to the Christianity's roots in Judaism and Hanukkah, the Jewish festival of lights in December. That kind of explains why we use lights to decorate. But what about candles for Ireland traditionally? And why do we put them in the windows? The most popular of the traditions is that the candle in the window represents the welcome, the Cade Mila Falcha, the Ireland's trademark of welcome. Further back, it was said to welcome the Holy Family. And back then, a house without a candle was perceived as unwelcoming as the innkeeper refused Mary and Joseph a room. Three candles represented Joseph, Mary and the baby Jesus, and the door was left unlocked to let them in should they arrive after the family is asleep. The modern meaning of the Christmas candle is that it's been used just as a matter since the famine, as emigration left, many families missing a loved one at Christmas. The candle became more and more a sign of a welcome to a family member visiting home. Even the president's residence, the Orison Uthoran, puts a candle in the window to express welcome to returning emigrants. It's a welcome to weary travellers who need a place of rest for the night. And, you know, you have to be careful, though, of candles in the window and remember that they can be a fire hazard as well. The other historical explanation for the lit candle dates back to the penal laws when Catholicism was outlawed. During that time, priests fled into hiding to defy the orders to cease performing masses. The laws had little effect on what people believed. They did force them to be more creative in how they practiced it. So one of the three lit candles stood as a sign that the family was Catholic and an invitation to any passing priest to come and say mass with the family. Despite the harsh laws, Irish Catholics learned to have a priest come and say mass in their home, especially at Christmas. So there's a variety of different meanings for the candle in the window. So finally today, we look at the Wren boys, because that's a very significant Irish tradition. And just like we have our Christmas tree and the laden table and the candle in the window, I just want to tell you a little bit about the Wren boys. So blessings on St. Stephen's Day, La Fela Stefan, or La Nadrolon, meaning the Wren's Day, has its significance in Wales as well, with Gwil San Stefan in Welsh. 
And this festival symbolizes the pagan and Christian roots. St. Stephen was the first Christian martyr and the day was also celebrated by mummers, troops of all male amateur actors, also known as the Wren Boys or Straw Boys across Britain. And it was very popular in Ireland. The name alludes to many legends that we have around. So it includes those in Irish mythology, linking episodes in the life of Jesus to the Wren. People dress up in old clothes, wear straw hats, and travel from place to place with fake wrens, and they dance and sing and play music. The wren allegedly betrayed St. Stephen. Hence the ritual and the then symbolic revenge. The wren was also considered king of the birds and represented the old year. Capturing a wren alive was said to ensure a prosperous new year, and a wren feather was a talisman to protect one from being lost at sea. Many of these are pagan in origin, but the Irish Gaelic word, you know, means druid bird for wren. So it had a significance in the old legends at the time. So the annual festivals and musicians from all over the country, people would come and entertain people at your door, or you might let them in. And, uh, you know, we have a a, a source of John B. Keane basing his novel on the Bowron Maker on the activities of the Wren Boys in native Kerry. So it's really nice to be able to look up these and symbolism as well. And of course, you'd give people a few coins and there was great fun to be had in counting out the money and dividing it all up and really having a general good time going out on the Wren would have been and no matter how bad you were as a singer or dancer or any other aspect, one would do that as well. So very interesting Irish traditions and nice to be able to look forward to Christmas this year and think about times in past. Think about the symbolism behind the Christmas table, the Christmas tree, the candlelight and the Wren boys. And of course, we won't forget Little Christmas, as it's known as an Irish tradition as well. So we'll talk about Little Christmas, Nolignamon, the 6th of January, also known as Old Christmas. And it's one of the traditional names amongst the Irish Christians and, and other Christians as well, known as the Feast of the Epiphany, celebrated as the conclusion of the 12 days of Christmas tide. It was always the last day of the Christmas holidays in relate, but not anymore since primary schools, but um, that may change this year. And owing to the difference in the calendars, as early as the fourth century, the churches of East Roman Empire were celebrating Christmas on the 6th of January, while those in the Western Roman Empire were celebrating it on the 25th of December. So there was a Gregorian calendar as a correction to the Julian calendar because the Julian calendar had too many leap years and it cost it to be out of drift with the solar year. So the reasons the Feast of the Epiphany is sometimes referred to as Old Christmas or Old Christmas Day. And Nolignamon is where the women put their feet up in Ireland and they do absolutely nothing. And it's known as Women's Christmas. So Little Christmas is known as Women's Christmas. And the tradition is still strong because the Irish men take on the household duties for the day. Goose was the traditional meat served on women's Christmas and some women hold parties or go out to celebrate the day. So as a result, it was common to have parties of women, you know, and, and that of that day. It's also the traditional day to remove the Christmas tree and decorations. The traditional is not well documented, um, but it, it does go that it is the, the day to take down the Christmas decorations and there is some some uh, traditions around that as well. So without further ado I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas from the Genealogy Radio Show and Radio Cork Bashkin. We're delighted to have looked after you for during this unprecedented year in 2021 and we look forward to being with you in 2022. Our next show will be in 2022 and we really look forward to that. 
we look forward to bringing you a whole suite of sources and stories to keep you amused, keep you informed, keep you entertained, and most of all, help in your learning of Irish genealogy. So may I wish you a very Merry Christmas and stay safe and stay searching for your Irish roots and ancestors. The show is podcast out on a Sunday. It is repeated. You can gain access to all the archives of the show. We have put up up to series nine in plansandsurnames.com and we'll also, of course, be updating that further and be bringing it up to our series and so on. So we're delighted to have looked after you. <laughs>